this is Annie Grace. I'm answering questions today. And the question is, hi, I feel like I've changed a lot regarding alcohol, but I'm still having issues with my circumstances. They haven't changed. I'm still poor. I'm still stuck in an unhappy place geographically. For years now, since my move from the big city, I've used alcohol to escape because I cannot physically escape. I'm here for at least another year, if not indefinitely. I don't know how to cope with my unfortunate circumstances. The only pull that alcohol has anymore is an occasional escape from this feeling of isolation. So that is such a great question. And thank you for being so brave to ask that phenomenal, phenomenal question. And of course, I can't know all of your circumstances or everything that's happening in or inside of you. But I can know that I, I actually was interviewed yesterday and um, the final question she asked me was, what does freedom mean for you? And I had been thinking uh, back over my life in order to answer this question. And I was 33 years old and I was in the <laughs> really blessed and yet very unfortunate position of really having gotten everything I wanted in life. And I know that that sounds kind of crass almost at the beginning, but here I was, I was living in the mountains of Colorado. I had two children. I had an amazing marriage. I was super successful in my career. I had been promoted. I had, I had reached heights in my career, which were way higher than I'd ever set out to achieve. Um, you know, I had, I had gotten my master's degree. I had achieved financial freedom. I was in this place where every single goal that I had set out saying, okay, that next thing, if I can just get there then, and that's how I'd been driven my entire life, by the way, I had started out very much in very um, humble circumstances and with n not very much money at all. And I said, if, if I could just do that next thing, if I could just get there, if I can just get, you know, if I can just get enough money and figure out enough scholarships and enough student loans to get into college, then, then I'm going to be good. If I can just from college find enough way to get out and get my first job, then I'm going to be good. If I can just figure out a way to pay off all of these student loans, then it's going to be good. If I can just get married, then it's going to be good. Then I was married. And if I can just have kids, then it's going to be good. And so here I was, I was 33 years old. And I'm looking around at this life. And I know this is so hard to believe if you've never been in this situation. I love how Jim Carrey talks about this. He actually says that he, his biggest wish for every human being is that they get everything they ever could have wanted, imagined, or wanted to achieve. Because then you come to reckon with, with reality and what your true self is. But there I was, I was looking around and I was miserable. And I was so, so miserable. And there was two reasons. One, I didn't have anything else to strive or achieve for. And that took some sort of purpose and meaning out of my life. And number two is because all the things I was striving for, they were pretty meaningless anyway. And because inside myself wasn't happy. Inside myself was a terrible place to be. And all of that striving and all of that achieving and everything I was setting out to do, that was a lot of noise to distract me from the place inside of me that hurt the place inside of me that I was numbing, that I didn't want to be around. And I was drinking a ton. And I remember laying on the floor of my closet, just feeling like the whole world, especially my family would be better if I just wasn't around. And there was nothing else in my circumstance that I could blame it on. And at that moment, the whole world came crashing down because all of a sudden I had to say, if there's nothing else in my circumstance that I can make better, in order to fix this pain, this ache, this hurt, this loneliness, this isolation, if there's nothing else that I can go after, then what? Then I might as well not even be here. I might as well not even wake up tomorrow morning because why? And the truth is, is that there's never going to be anything in our circumstance ever that's going to fill that hole inside ourselves. And so you have this time right now, Kelly, where you have an opportunity to fill that hole inside yourself. You say you might be there another year. What would it look like to be happy and learn that process, learn that level of happiness, of self-acceptance, of self-awareness right where you are? And then when your circumstances get better, it's all gravy. It's all icing on the cake because you have been able to make peace inside your heart, inside yourself right now during this difficult time. What would that look like?
I love the Lao Tzu quote, and he says, in order to have peace in the nations, we must have peace in the cities. And in order to have peace in the cities, we must have peace in the home. And in order to have peace in the home, we must have peace in the heart. And all of it, there's a lot more layers to that quote, but all of it comes down to finding peace in our heart. And that is something that is totally possible. It's hard. <laughs> it's work. But finding peace in any circumstance is possible. And the sooner we learn that actually the circumstances, they're not really the juice. And if you can find happiness in this circumstance, then wow, your whole life can open up on the other side of the circumstance. So I just, I wish you the best in that, but that is, that is the way. And so in the path, actually, interestingly, we spend the first six months on the behavior of drinking and we spend it changing that behavior with that formula I talked about, um, knowledge, emotion, and then action. And then we spend the second six months doing all of that inner work on ourselves so that we no longer want to drink under any circumstances so that we're not looking to escape from ourselves. I remember that time in my life, I would have to have either it was a book on tape or a podcast or a TV show on, I would have to have external noise piped into my brain every single moment of every single day because the idea of being alone with myself was more terrifying than anything else I could possibly imagine because inside my mind was such a terrible and toxic place. And I can also tell you after I've stopped drinking, I've been able to do this work and it's, it's been years of work. It's a never ending path. This is life work. It's beautiful that it's life work. And once you reframe it as life work, it's really amazing, but it's been years of work and I have been able to get off all four antidepressants that I was taking. And it's been a really, really incredible, incredible journey. So that's such, such a great idea. Um, anyway, great question. Thank you so much for that beautiful question. And thank you for having the bravery to ask it.